be to engage with our community. We are not going to hide behind the walls of our church and hide from the world and, and, and hide from everything that's going on. We are going to engage with our culture. We're going to love our community, and uh, we're going to see God work. Amen? We're going to see God bring people uh, to him. We're going to see lives change. And whether that's through I Love My City, uh, just little opportunities like uh, buying shoes for, for foster kids or City Fest. Uh, and you're going to be hearing about more opportunities in the future that we can just engage our community. But City Fest is the biggest one on the horizon for us right now. I'm so excited about this. But here's the deal with City Fest, all right, is uh, part of what makes this opportunity so effective. Uh, it's not the big program. I mean, the program's going to be fun, and it is going to be big and exciting, uh, but that's really not the core of this, right? The, the, the real heart of this, the real core of this uh, has to do with these cards. Hopefully you got one of these as you came through the front door this morning. If you were at Renew uh, just a few weeks ago, you already filled one of these out, but I wanted to make sure that every one of you got an opportunity to fill out one of these prayer cards. This is really the heart, the core of City Fest, all right? And, and from this point forward, we're going to begin praying for the people that are on your heart and that are on your mind, all right? The people that need to know the love of Jesus. And so if you take out this card right now, if you've got it, um, if you flip it over to the side where there are, uh, there's a space here, uh, one through five, Okay, that space is for you to write down the names of five people that you might invite to be a part of City Fest. All right? These are not your Christian friends. These are your, your neighbors, your, your family members, people who need to give their lives to Jesus, people who do, not need, need, uh, who, who do not know the Lord and need to know him. All right? So here's what I'd like you to do right now. If you've got your card, take it out, and I want to give you just a few moments this morning. Who are who are five people, just five people, maybe they're neighbors, maybe you don't know them that well at this point, okay? Maybe it's somebody that is just an acquaintance, all right? But, but the names of five people that you would commit to begin praying for before City Fest, and that you might pray that God would give you an opportunity to invite them to this event, all right? Let me tell you what's going to happen with these cards. You're going you're gonna to write those names down on this card, and uh, then those names are, yeah, if you don't have a card, Tim's got some there. Uh, just raise your hand and Tim will get one in your hands. All right, here's what's going to happen. You're going to write these names down and I'm going to ask you uh, at the end of the service to just drop them in the offering boxes, okay, at the back of the room. All right, there's four boxes. Drop the cards in there. Uh, those names are going to go to the Plow Association. We have a, we have a prayer team that is in place and is going to start praying for these names, praying for these people by name until the event in August. All right, I know that some of you have written down already some names that are over here on the cross. We're going to be, we're going to be praying for those people. We're going to be praying for these people. I'm excited. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to tell you about another way here uh, next week that we're going to uh, kind of keep bringing this up and bringing this in front of you so that uh, we're just remembering to, to pray for these folks. All right, so take a moment this morning. If you've got your card, fill that out. Think of five people that you might invite. And then at the end of the service today, uh, you can take that card and you can drop it in the offering box on your way out. All right? Take a minute, fill that out if you haven't already. All right? Maybe you don't know five people, right? <laughs> Maybe you don't know five people who don't know Jesus. That's something to pray about, right? Ask God to start uh, maybe bringing some people into your life. I, pr I tell you what, if you, you pray that prayer, be ready for him to answer that prayer, all right? Just ask him to bring some people into your life that need to know the love of Jesus. And uh, yeah, so uh, on your way out today, 
I'm going to ask you, you can, you can tear off that top part and hold on to that, this bottom part, drop that in the, uh, the offering boxes. We'll collect those and get those to the Plow Association, and they're going to start praying for those. But, but right now, let's go ahead and, and stop and pray. Father, this morning, we are just so aware, of the God, that uh, without you, uh, life just seems empty, uh, void of hope especially in these times, God, that are so difficult for so many. God, our community just needs to hear the message of hope in you. And so, God, I pray that we would be effective. God, I pray that we would just be uh, active and not just sitting back and, and thinking, well, somebody else can do that. This is somebody else's problem. God, this is, this is what you've called us to do. This is what you've called New Hope Community Church to do. This is what you've called me to do, to love to love the people around me so much that, God, I would be willing to, to, to make a simple invitation. And God, we're just, we're just praying at this moment that, God, you would begin to soften the hearts, that, God, you begin to, to pave the way for, for those who need to know you. Uh, God, that they might just clearly hear and understand and respond to your message of grace and love. And so, Father, I pray that uh, as we move forward in the next several weeks, that, again, you'll just continue to, to bring those, those individuals to mind, those people to mind. God, we love you, and God, we want to, we want to be obedient to you as you've called us to, to make disciples. And, uh, yeah, so, Father, we just look forward to seeing how you'll work through all of this. And so, Lord, we just lift it all up and ask it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. Good job. Give the Lord a hand because he's good this morning. Yeah, so many good things. So many good things. Well, we're going we're gonna to hop into it this morning because uh, we're running a little bit short on time. And so uh, we're going to hop right into week three of uh, our ongoing series called Habits That Form Us. So this is week number three, right? So the first couple of weeks, we kind of uh, laid the foundation, if you will, for, for building habits that form us uh, right into the image of Jesus, right? We all have lots of habits in our lives. They say 40% of what we do every day is out of habit. And so we want to build habits that, that point us towards Jesus, habits that form us into his image. And there, so there's, there's just a couple of mindsets, right, that I think are important that we've talked about the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first one is this, that habits that form us into the image of Jesus begin by understanding our identity in Jesus, all right? It's not so much about what we're doing, but about who we're becoming. It's about stepping into God, who God says we are. We are, his, we are his children, we are his sons, we are his daughters, we are redeemed, we are forgiven. And everything that we do ought to flow, ought to come through, come from that identity. All right? So that's the, that's the first mindset. The second one that we talked about was this, that habits that form us into the image of Jesus begin by training and not trying. All right? We try at a lot of things, all right? but unfortunately when we try, all right, we, we, we tend to find that we fail. All right? Because trying leads uh, a lot of room for, for just giving up when it gets hard. All right? But when we're training, all right, when we're training uh, we plan, we strategize, all right? we commit. And so, uh, so, so building these habits that form us into the image of Jesus, they begin by training and not trying. And so those mindsets are really, really foundational if, if we're going to be successful in building some of these habits. And, and you can probably all think of some of the, the habits that you would either like to change or you would like to begin, right? Habits that maybe uh, keep you uh, apart from Jesus, right? That lead you away from him. Or habits that maybe you haven't built that you know you ought to that will, that will take you towards Jesus, that will begin to form you into his image, and so like I said, we've talked about kind of some foundational things, but, but beginning this week, we're going to start talking uh, about some of those specific habits. What are some of those habits? Now, there's no exhaustive list, right? I don't have a long list of, you know, to, to present to you of, of these habits that kind of point us towards Jesus. There's no exhaustive list, all right? But the one that we want to talk about today that I think is the most foundational of the habits is the habit of God's word, all right? This is foundational to all of our other habits. And, and Paul tells us why this, this habit of God's word is so important, 
So uh, if you have your Bible, you can go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 13. And that's where we're going to be this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul tells us why this habit of God's word is so important. Paul says this, he says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So Paul tells us why this habit of being in God's word is, is so important, all right? Number one, uh, I, I would say this, that God's word, it's important because God's word leads us to truth. God's word leads us to truth. And in verse 16, Paul says that all scripture is breathed out by God. It's inspired by God, all right? It came from God by men. This is what, uh, this is what Peter says in chapter one of his book, uh, of Second Peter, he says this, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the Bible God, is, is God's word. It's his, these are his very words, breathed out, all right? That's the, that, that's the picture, all right? And that's actually the literal meaning uh, in, the, in the original language uh, of these words, that God breathed out his word. It, it comes directly from him, all right? Like Peter said, uh, men were, were, were carried along by the Holy Spirit as God spoke through them, and they wrote it down. One of my favorite authors is uh, Mark Batterson, and this is what he says about God's word. He says, the Bible is not just my starting point, it's the final authority when it comes to matter of faith and doctrine. I believe the Bible to be the inspired word of God, truth with a capital T. I like that, Cap truth with a capital T. Because in our culture, right, we've elevated something above truth. If, if, if God's word is truth, all right, culturally we've elevated something uh, above that. Uh, what is that thing? We've, we've elevated tolerance above truth. I think we've all kind of seen that and experienced that, right? This idea that, that everyone is right and no one is wrong. That there's no such thing as black and white truth. That if your truth offends me, well then it's not true for me. And so this, this idea of tolerance has been elevated above truth. But I believe God's word leads us into truth and God calls us to a higher standard than tolerance. He calls us to truth. Amen? All right. But here's the thing. Okay. Truth always has to come with grace. Truth and grace, they're, they're an inseparable pairing. Okay. When you have truth, you must also have grace. Grace means this. Grace means I'll love you no matter what. But truth means I'll be honest with you no matter what. We talked about this several weeks ago. That people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Truth is, is, is so important. And, and, and we walk so far away from it today. And I, I think we've all seen that as, as truth has become relative in our culture. But God's word is our foundation, it is truth, all right? But we can't separate grace from truth. When you do that, you have legalism, all right? And, we, and we've seen that, and, and maybe, maybe you've experienced that, 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 that spirit of legalism. And that's why Jesus got so bent out of shape with the Pharisees, right? They, they knew the truth, but there was no love, there was no grace coupled with that truth. And so God's word leads us into truth, but it must, be, it must be coupled with grace. Second, we see that uh, God's word leads us to, to understanding. Look at what Paul, Paul writes here to Timothy in verse 15. He says, and how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, 
which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Right? He says it's able to make us wise for salvation. You know, wisdom and knowledge are, are different. Right? Wisdom is what allows us to, to use our knowledge to become more like Jesus. Right? And then look at verse 16. He says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for four things. Right? Profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. He says it's profitable, uh, number one, for teaching, for providing instruction, right? It's profitable for instructing us. It's profitable, profitable for us to, to use when instructing other people, our children, right? Uh, other people that we might have an opportunity to teach. The Bible is profitable, all right, for providing instruction. It's profitable for reproof, all right? It's able to point out what is wrong, Right? It's able to pinpoint all right, uh, our sin. It's able to, to pinpoint errors in our thinking and in our doctrine. Paul says it's profitable for correction. Not only is God's word able to point out the things that are wrong, but it's able to, to offer all right, correction, fixing what is wrong. Right? You all know people that, that maybe complain <laughs> but never offer any solutions Right? I don't mind when people complain as long as they offer a solution, right? <laughs> and God's word does that, right? He points out, it, it, it's able to root out, all right, the, the, the things that are wrong, all right, the sin and, and, and the errors in our life, but it also offers us a path to fix those wrong things. Then he says it's, uh, it, it's, it's profitable for training in righteousness. It offers a, a method of training you know, in 1987, I enrolled at Western Baptist College to get training as a youth pastor. And uh, four years later, I don't know what they're thinking, but they turned me loose on a youth group. And um, here we are. <laughs> all right. God's word is, is valuable. All right. It's, 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 uh, uh, it's profitable for training us in righteousness. Right? God's word leads us to, to understanding. The Bible is our, uh, and I've talked about this before, and I just love this picture. The Bible is our Rosetta Stone. It's, it's a great metaphor. So uh, I don't know if you know what the Rosetta Stone is. There's a picture of it right there. It's a real thing. It sits in the uh, British Museum of Natural History. It's the most visited uh, uh, display that they have in the museum. Uh, the stone was discovered by Napoleon's army in July of 1799 near the, the town of Rosetta in the Nile Delta in Egypt. All right, and so the stone, you maybe, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's actually uh, is written in three different languages. It was a decree, all right, that, so the writing is a decree that was issued in 196 BC by Ptolemy V, all right, he was a king that issued a decree and so that everybody could understand the decree, it was written in three different languages. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, another Egyptian language called uh, Datomic, and then Greek. Well, up to this point in history, uh, the Egyptian languages were dead languages. No, nobody, could, nobody could decipher them. Nobody, nobody spoke them. They didn't know what they meant. But when they found this stone... Because the decree is word for word written in three different languages, even though they didn't know the first two, they could translate those first two languages based on the Greek, which they did know how to translate. And so the Rosetta Stone was, was the key, all right? It was the missing piece to the puzzle to, to understanding the Egyptian language. Uh, hieroglyphs in the, in the lost Egyptian languages. And, and God's word is, is it's, it's the same for us, right? God's word uh, helps us to understand God's heart. It's the key to understanding salvation. It's the key to understanding relationships, not just with God, but with the people who are part of our lives, all right? God's word is, is our Rosetta Stone, all right? It, it helps us to, to interpret our lives, okay? God's word leads us to truth. It, it leads us to understanding. And then in verse 17, uh, Paul shows us that God's word leads us to maturity. 
It leads us to maturity. Verse 17 says that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. All right, the man of God, the, man, the woman of God, the person of God, the student of God, all right? That is our identity. That is who we are. And God says that, that, that his word, all right, can, can, can make us complete, perfect, whole, without blemish. That's what that word means. That the man of God may be complete, equipped, equipped for every, God, every good work. God's word forms us into the image of Jesus, all right? It's who he is, is making us to be. It's who he's, who he's changing us to be. He's, he's, he's changing our identity so that we can do the things that Jesus did. God is equipping us. He's equipping us so that we can do the things that in Christ he has given us to do. To be godly husbands, to be godly wives, to be godly parents, to be godly children to be salt and light in the lives of, of the people around us. Things that we can't do in our own strength and in our own power. God's, God's word, all right, it's, it's, the, it's the key. It's what brings us to maturity so we're, we're able to step into our identity and then do the things that he's called us to do. This is why, this is why developing this habit of spending time in God's word is so important. Becoming mature and, 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 and stepping into our identity, you, just, you can't do it without spending time in his word, in his truth. And finally, I would say this, that God's word leads us to intimacy. God's word leads us to intimacy. Reading the Bible, spending time in God's word is not an end in itself. Right? The goal of knowledge isn't just Bible knowledge, right? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 8, 1, that knowledge puffs up, right? It makes us arrogant, right? Anybody here ever known somebody who thinks they know everything, right? I know. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not one of those people who's like, yeah, he's standing on the platform, right? Knowledge, knowledge tends to puff up. The goal, all right, of spending time in God's word, the goal ought to be not to just acquire more knowledge, but the goal is learning to recognize and respond to your Heavenly Father's voice so you can grow in intimacy with Him. Right. The end game, that the whole goal here is to, is to develop a more intimate relationship with Him so that you can recognize His voice. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience, right? Maybe you're, you're reading God's Word and, and, and you read something and you're like, oh man, like, it, the, the light just comes on. Something just suddenly makes sense. All right, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. That is the Holy Spirit in you, teaching you the things that Jesus did and said and that God breathed out his truth. All right, maybe that's happened to you on a Sunday morning, right? Somebody was here on the platform teaching and you're like, and I, I wish I had a nickel for, for every time that I heard this, Okay. Pastor, did, did you write that just for me? It felt like you were talking to me. Nope, sorry. <laughs> All right, that was the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, confirming the things, confirming the truth that God breathed out. And you can't develop that kind of intimacy when you don't spend time in his word. God has ex exhaled his word. Right? He, he's breathed it out. And when we, when we take in God's word, it's like we're inhaling right? the very words that the Holy Spirit has exhaled. I love what Charles Spurgeon, a great uh, Bible teacher, theologian, uh, he said this, a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. <laughs> right? Of course, I, I don't know what that means today. Most of us uh, read our Bible on our phone. I don't know. Maybe if your screen is cracked, I don't know. So, all right. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Just this idea that, you know, as we spend time in his presence, as we spend time in, in his word, as we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, to mature us and to change us so that we can step into our identity, uh, that life begins to, to change and to make more sense. 
And so before we wrap up this morning, I want to give you just three ways, all right? Three ways to develop the habit of God's word, all right? So this is just some kind of practical there's some kind of practical suggestions, right? So I think there are, are really three ways to develop the habit of God's word, all right? Number one is this, uh, to hear it, the habit of hearing it, all right? So, so the place, first place, maybe the easiest to, to take it in is Sunday morning. I know I'm preaching to the choir, right? Y'all are here, okay, or you're watching online or, or wherever you might be, but, but making a habit of just being here, that, that, that's a chief part of, of what we do on Sunday morning is, is we want to provide good instruction, all right? We want to we wanna teach things that, that hopefully, uh, you know, not hopefully, but are definitely God's truth so that you can inhale that and, and begin to, uh, to know him more. Uh, another good way to, to hear God's word, uh, podcasts, all right, I got some suggestions here for you. Uh, and by the way, this little section of my notes I have sitting out on uh, the information booth because there's a lot of, lot of information here. And uh, so you may not catch it this morning, and, uh, and that's okay. If, you, if you're interested in this information, you can pick up one of those sheets at the information booth on your way out. So some podcasts, right? Another way to take in God's word by hearing it, right? Some, here's some suggestions, right? The one-year daily audio Bible by Brian Harden. All right, this is one of my favorites. I love this guy. He's super quirky and has a really weird voice. <laughs> and maybe that's part of why I enjoy it. But uh, he's a great teacher and uh, does a great job of just kind of reading God's word and then just giving, uh, you know, some comments at the end. And uh, he does that every single day. Uh, and so you can uh, sign up for that podcast, the One Year Daily Audio Bible. Um, some other podcasts, uh, Your Move by Andy Stanley is a great one. Andy's such a great teacher. Um, the Bible Project, if you go to bibleproject.com, they've got a weekly podcast. There are, just, there are tons and tons of, of places on, uh, uh, all across the internet that are just good Bible teaching opportunities to hear God's word. I would say this, though. There's lots of bad ones. Right, so be careful uh, about, and if you have a question about one, if it's uh, something that you don't recognize, you know, you feel free. You can always uh, bring that by uh, t Pastor Tim or Daniel or myself, and we'd love to give you some, some direction there. Uh, so not only can we hear it, but, but maybe the next step would be to read it, okay? To read God's word. I think that the best way, all right, to, to develop that habit of being in God's word is, is to do a one-year reading plan. All right, to make it your goal to read through the entire Bible in one year. All right, it's, uh, and I love the, the YouVersion app, um, and you can do all of these kind of three, four, eight-week Bible studies. Uh, but, but I found for myself, like I'll get done with the study, and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure what I want to do next. So one-year Bible reading plan really kind of keeps you on track and gives you something to shoot for. All right, and there's lots of one-year uh, reading plans on the YouVersion app. If you don't have the YouVersion app, what's wrong with you? All right, you should download it. It's a great, great app. All right, if you just do a search in the YouVersion app uh, for one-year reading, um, and then click See All, there's just dozens of, of plans there that you can, you can download. Again, the Bible Project, uh, you can go to their website, and they've got uh, some downloadable plans as well. So three ways to take in God's word, to hear it, to read it, and then finally, to study it, right? And this is, I think that this is where, where the, the real prize is at, when we take time to study God's word. Not just to hear it, hearing it's good, and, and reading it is good, but, but to take time to, to study God's word. And so this is what I say about studying God's word. Number one, be curious. So, so you read something, and you're like, man, I don't, I don't really, I wonder what that means, All right? Figure it out. <laughs> you know, be curious. Try, try, try and find the answer. Like, you know, I've read about this, this word propitiation, right, that's come up uh, in this verse that I read. What in the world is that word? Track it down. Figure out what it means. Be curious, all right? Number two, I would say journal when you read. Journal. Uh, just, have, just have a little journal, you know, you can get a $5 journal out here, and uh, as you read, uh, here are some questions that you can ask while you're reading. When you, when, you, when you finish a passage, you can ask yourself, what does this passage say about who God is? 
about his character. You can ask, uh, what does this passage say about my relationship with God or other people? All right, what does this passage say about what God wants me to understand? About what God wants me to believe, what God wants me to desire, and what God wants me to do? So if you kind of keep those eight questions kind of in the front of your mind as you're reading, you know, journal out some of those things. I, I find that information sticks way longer in my brain when I write it down than when I just read it. And then next I would say find some, find some resources, right? Uh, the CSB Study Bible by Holman Publishers is an awesome study Bible, right? It's got a verse-by-verse -verse explanation uh, of what's going on in Scripture. So the CSB Study Bible, the ESV Study Bible is also a really, really good uh, study Bible. And study Bibles, you know, probably not what you're going to carry to church. I don't know, maybe some of you have yours with you this morning, but they're usually tomes, not books, right? They're thick, and they just have lots of information. Great, though, to, uh, to study out of. Uh, another, great question, uh, another great resource, like I said, be curious. And so when questions come up, there's a great website. It's called gotquestions.org gotquestions.org, and you can just type in, literally, you can type in your question, and five or six articles will pop up kind of answering uh, your, your questions. It's, it's really a very reliable and uh, good resource. And then finally, if you really want to geek out, right, you really want to go deep, uh, you can download something called the, the Logos Bible Software. And uh, I, I, have a, I have a version of this. You can download a free version. It comes with about 40 resources. So there's commentaries and Bible dictionaries and all kinds of really, really cool resources. If you pay a little bit of money, um, the, the version I have has 1,700 resources. <laughs> and I've read it all. No. <laughs> not, even, not even close. What's, re what's really cool, right, is you can like hover over a word and it will give you that word in the original language and what that word means in the Greek and it kind of break it down. So it's a really, really neat tool, uh, the Logos Bible software. And then uh, finally, I would say make it a habit. Make it a habit. All right? Pick a time and a place uh, that will help you be successful. Right. If, if you're not a morning person, don't make it your goal to get up early <laughs> and spend time in your Bible, right? You're just setting yourself up for failure, all right? Pick a time and a place that will help you be successful. Uh, don't quit if you miss a day or two, all right? Uh, there was some, some research years ago that said in 21 days, you can develop a habit. Uh, but that really is not true. Uh, better research says that it can sometimes take longer than 80 days to establish a habit. And, and, and you're going to miss a day here and there. But don't quit just because you miss a day or two. Habits take time to develop. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, I would say this. Um, you, sh you need to purchase this book. <laughs> this is, a, I'm not making any money on this, okay, so. Uh, this is a great, great book. It's called Life Hacking Spiritual Disciplines. I gave out a few copies. Uh, I've got three to give out this morning. Grant, you wanna help me with this? Uh, if you'd like a copy of this, just raise your hand. Grant's gonna pick three people that uh, get a copy of that book. So Grant, no pressure. All right, pick the right people. If you pick the wrong people, I can't help you. It's really a great book. So what's great about this book is it doesn't just uh, give you, like, here's why you should read your Bible. It, 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 it's, it's kind of the, the pre to that, okay? It tells you how to really, how your brain works, why we fail at developing habits, and, and some really great suggestions on, on how to develop those habits. You can download this off Amazon. It's called Like Hacking Spiritual Disciplines. And uh, it, it is a great resource. There's also um, a website called lifehack.org. They have an article called 18 Tricks to Making New Habits Stick. And uh, that uh, web address is on the resource out in the lobby. So uh, some of the same information, just ideas on how to de develop, okay, and solidify your habits, the good habits, the habits that form us into the image of Jesus. All right. Uh, if you don't have, I would say this, uh, just to wrap up this morning, if you don't have a Bible, 
come see me. I, we've got some great Bibles that, that we will give you. Get a good readable version of the Bible if you're carrying your King James Version. This is nothing against the King James, but it's super hard to read, all right, if you're like me and, uh, you know, just barely understand the English language anyway, all right? Get, a, get an easy-to-understand translation like the CSB, um, and uh, that will go a long ways. And so spending time, developing this habit of spending time in God's Word, like filling filling ourselves up with his truth and, and understanding so that it can bring us to maturity so we can know him more intimately. That's, that's really the goal of spending time in God's word. So uh, I hope you'll do that. And if you, if you have questions or you want suggestions, I'm a resource. You know, come talk to me. Email me, chris at newhope on 395.com. I've got tons and tons of resources. I would love, love to help you out. All right? Well, as always, at the end here, I'm going to just be available. I would love to pray for you this morning. I know life has been hard for many of you, and I love being able to to just pray for you and to love on you this morning. So I'm going to be available uh, as we wrap up, Uh, but let's pray before we do. Father, thank you for your grace and for your mercy, for your your word. Your very words, God, the Bible is your love letter to us. It it shows us who you are. It, It shows us your character. It shows us what you want most from your children. God, it's full of wisdom. It gives us direction about our lives. Even some of the most difficult topics, Father, you, 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 you give us such clear and good direction. And so, Father, we're just grateful for, for how you fill us up with your truth. And God, I just pray for, for those who, uh, that habit has been a struggle. God, I pray that you would just uh, help them to come up with a good plan and a good strategy to, to implement that, God. Just empower them to, to be successful in that habit. And so, Father, we're just uh, grateful again for the opportunity to be together today. We love you and pray it all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.